We're in Adobe Bridge CC and I've got two pictures. A little bit of a problem with this. I wanted to get this cafe area in here as well as the bay and the church over on this side. Now I couldn't do it. I was using an 18 mil lens. I was stood back as far as I could possibly get. So uh, the solution, take two pictures. I've taken this one and you want to allow a minimum of 25% overlap. Now, as I said, we're in bridge. What I'm going to do is I'm going to click on this to highlight it. I'm now going to come over to this image, pressing command or control, and I'm going to click on this one. Incidentally, you can use this as well for creating a full panorama from two images right the way up to a full 360. Now that we've done that, I'm going to come up to the icon here. This is going to take us into camera raw. And if we click on it, we're now going to go from bridge We've now arrived in Camera Raw. Okay, this one is highlighted. If you come down, there it is. That's the one with the church. So I'm going to press Command or Control. I'm going to click on the top one. They're both now selected. And if you come up to this little stripey icon at the top here, click on this. You get a flyout menu. We're going to go down to Merge to Panorama. Click on Merge to Panorama. We've now got our preview. And this is the shot that I was after. OK, looking around, that looks uh, really good. And if we come up, we got the projection It's cylindrical. You could also try this one here. And if you just click on the two, you can see the difference. Just got a little bit more. Yeah, it's just cropped it down a little bit more with this particular one. You've also got perspective, but uh, no, don't think we'll be using that one. Right. Coming down under options, you have got auto crop. Let's uncheck this. There it is. You can see the job that that has done. But if you come down to boundary warp, you can now move this across. And as you start to move it across, you'll notice the way the image is opening up. And it looks, I'm going to take it to that position. Looks good like that because uh, I'm just looking for the verticals in particular with this image. So just perhaps back a little bit. That's ideal if you want to get more of the sky in, a little bit more of the foreground in. You can use this. You can take it right the way up as well. Just seeing what works for you in your picture. I'm going to use the auto crop. So I'm going to take it like this and I'm just going to bring this into that area. Again, what I'm looking at is the, the building. It seems to look correct at this position. We have got 36. I like the way that's looking. Looking at the horizons as well as the, the vertical lines there, just perhaps backing it up a wee bit more into that position. Great stuff. I'm now going to click on Merge. Clicking on Merge opens up the Merge results. But you can give it a name there of your choice and you can select the location. I'm going to put it into my pano folder. I'm going to click on Save. Now off it's going to go. It may take a little bit more time if you're using a full 360 or if you've got more images. But you can see that was pretty quick anyway. So there's our panorama. I'm going to pick up the crop tool. Now with the crop tool, as soon as you click on it, you can see there it is, the checkerboard background showing the areas it's been cropped. I'm going to lift this up even further. I'm going to take it into this area like that would be good. Just a little bit of railing will be left showing, but just clicking down in we pop. I'm going to make a few quick adjustments. I'm going to come to the shadows, going to open the shadows up, I'm going to go to the, the highlights, I'm going to drop the highlights down a touch or two into this position. We're going to go up to effects. Some of the effects I'm going to use the dehaze. I'm going to take this just slightly into that area. You can see the way it's given a really nice effect to the sea there, as well as bringing out a little bit more detail. It is hazy there in the distance, but just a little bit more detail around this position. Right, looking around the rest of the image, as you can probably tell by my concentrated voice. We're going to move it across into the right hand side for the whites. Just going to open those up. Looking for the warning triangle. Just going to back it up a little bit. Something like this here would be good. Just backing it up slightly. Great stuff. Right, we're going to open this into Photoshop as a smart object. Now, if you have got open image, all you need to do is press and hold down shift on the keyboard. Open image will then become open object. The reason for doing this is as a smart object created in Camera Raw, you can just double click on it in Photoshop and you can come back into Camera Raw and make any further adjustments. So let's open this as a smart object. We just pop back into Bridge. You see, there's a preview. There it is. It's arrived. It's now arrived in Photoshop as well. And as we can see, it is a smart object. This little icon here telling us that. 
Right, looking around the picture, there's a few uh, distractions we need to get rid of. Now to do this, we're going to put in a new empty layer. There it is there, layer one. I'm gonna come over to the toolbox. We're gonna to pick up the spot healing brush using command spacebar, control spacebar. We're gonna zoom right into this area here. There's our spot healing brush. I'm gonna click down and I'm gonna move it over this railing like that. And there it is, or there it was gone let's get rid of these verticals while we're at it something like this would be pretty good i prefer using the spot healing brush as opposed to using the clone tool with sand in particular you're liable to get repeat pattern using the uh, the clone tool spot healing brush does a really good job and even if it makes the odd mistake you can just quickly go over it which uh, is a I just find it a really quick and easy way of working. Let's get rid of those lines there. And this one here would be good. There it is, gone. And as we can see, we can just go over some of these little bits and pieces as well, just to tidy them up. Right, let's uh, wing our way over to the, where's this? There's the bin like this. And just clicking down, going over it. Don't forget, it's a sunny day. It's got a shadow, so let's get rid of the shadow as well. And if we just... Uh, yeah, sometimes it does it very quickly and easily in one go. Other times it's just a little bit, uh, yeah, does its own thing. Right, looking around the rest of the picture, perhaps these lamps here, just a bit on the distracting side. Going to click over that area that's come down around that position. Gone. Right, this one here, let's go over that. Let's go over the two while we're at it and down like this. Gone. And just a little bit on that top side like this. There's a bit in the water, so zoom in even closer to this position. I'm going to press uh, the right hand, sorry, the left hand square bracket just to drop the brush down in size. Let's get rid of it. And there it is. Great stuff. Right, using Command Zero, Control Zero. The reason for using a new empty layer, if you just switch it on and off, you can see that's all the cleaning up we've done. If you have made a mistake, you can simply pick up the eraser tool, come over to where the bin is, as I need to take that up in size like this. And with the eraser tool, you can just bring it back. There it is. And uh, okay, let's pick up the spot healing brush. You can do it again. Very, very quick, very, very simple way of working. As I say, using the new empty layer, just makes it a lot more flexible should you make a mistake. Great stuff. That will do nicely. At any time, we can go back into Camera Raw if we just double click on it. There it is, we're back into Camera Raw where we can make any adjustments. I'm gonna click on Cancel to take me back into Photoshop. And if we take a look at Bridge, there's the two images we started off with. There's our panorama. Don't forget that you can use this for any amount of pictures. It doesn't have to be two, it can be three, right the way up to whatever number it'll be for a full 360. I've used it in the horizontal, in the landscape format here, but you can also use it in the vertical format as well. So go on, give it a try. Let's come back into Photoshop. Give it a try. I hope you've enjoyed the video, but until the next time, it is happy imaging and take care.